Hey YouTube. Okay, so I've got my car all cammed up. I've got a headlight cam, a B pillar cam, the interior cam for the screen. All right, I've got the Model Y all cammed up again. So I've mounted a GoPro on the headlight. Admittedly, it's a little higher, but just for suction purposes, I, I needed to use that plastic area there. Um, but you can kind of see it's, it's up in the headlight. If we were to just want a forward facing uh, or a forward side camera. So the GoPro is going to have a much wider field of view, but anyway, it's the angle that's important. And I mounted an iPhone to record here and you can see it's uh, pretty much adjacent to the B pillar. I think that'll stay on there. And um, I've tilted it a little bit, so it's got a little bit of an angle, but the field of view of this thing, uh, the, the iPhone is much wider than the B-pillar camera would be. So the perspective is just about right. So those are the cameras I've mounted uh, on the car. So I'm just gonna drive around and just try to find a few little intersections where there's some obscurations, not completely, um, but interesting scenarios perhaps just to talk about perspective. The B-pillar cam, obviously for me, it's about um, when I'm sitting up normally, it's about a foot behind my head. Uh, when I lean all the way forward, it's definitely about two to two and a half feet behind my head. Um, let's see what we see. So this intersection is actually a, a pretty good one here. Now I've got a mail truck here that's blocking the stop sign, although you can see the stop, stop, stop sign there from the mapping, but it is kind of an interesting scenario. Uh, I've got a Sago Palm and, and to the left here, there is a stoplight and the cars come very fast when the stoplight is green across and, and to this perspective. So like right now, I'm looking out my window, I can't see. I'm right about past the stop sign. So here's where I would do the creeping. And uh, sorry about that cut there. Uh, my mailman came up and was wanting to talk to me a little bit. Anyway, I was right here next to his truck. Um, so that's the reason I cut that clip here. But the point I was trying to make here is this intersection uh, has cars that come from the left very, very fast because of the way the uh, stoplight kind of is there and when they accelerate they kind of go through here faster than they should as i'm approaching the stop sign i can't see right now uh cars that would be coming across the intersection um, as i start to lean forward here i'm just now getting a perspective of the intersection and just for grins i'm going to go ahead and do a range find here of what i'm looking at All right, that bush that is uh, blocking the intersection is at 35 meters. So I'm scooting up a little bit more, and I don't know if you can see the intersection and those cars crossing the intersection are at 100 meters. So that's about outside of the range, even though some of the cars and intersections may show up. It, it's beyond the range right there of the B pillar. And if you see the cars in the intersection, they're a little low. When they're on the other side of that stoplight, it's, it's, they're kind of raised a little bit. So this is just one of those where as an experienced driver, I know how to cross this intersection. And right about here is where I can sort of see down far enough to where if a car was coming across at about 35 or 40 miles an hour, if it would be safe. Okay, let's go find another intersection. Okay, I'm approaching this intersection, uh, which is my same uh, um, Roosevelt Boulevard three-lane divided highway. I have a median across the street there. And if you can see, Tesla Vision is kind of doing this fuzziness here like we've been talking about. Like the hump in the road is creating a little bit of a blur to where it might, if it actually, well, I don't have a destination, but the, the, the other side of the road is not being rendered very well. Right now, I can't see anything, of course, and I'm now approaching the stop line and right there is the stop line. Um, so I'm going to count those those crepe myrtles over there and just give you a range off of them in the median. And the range of those me those crepe myrtles is 68 meters to the third one up in the left, the farthest one to the left there. So I can't see yet. I can hear. I heard that motorcycle before I saw him. Okay, so now I'm right at about the point, and I'm not in the street yet. There. I'm, I'm right about at the street. I'm not quite in the intersection yet, 
but you can sort of see how the cars are approaching at about 60 miles an hour. Some of them are going about 50. Okay, with the rangefinder, those cars are approaching at about 100 meters uh, down near that intersection. So you can see the intersection, you can see the cars approaching. Uh, it's at about 100, 100 meters. I'm trying to leave that up on the screen so you guys can see it. All right, waiting on some cars coming. Okay, the light just turned yellow down there and that last car came through it. All right, so there is uh, another good intersection that perhaps has a little bit of a fence, but you can creep out to get a distance on the fence. But my point is, is the headlight camera can see so much better than I can. The B pillar can see if you creep out far enough. It just doesn't have a great advantage uh, of the perspective it sees. So it can be better. All right, let's go find another intersection. a few behind the trees there and they're just popping out it looks like they're popping out as soon as they come from behind the trees um, so that's that's just kind of a reference point there um, doesn't look like it's seeing them here's another truck right behind the trees now it's got a truck and a trailer I got a glimpse of it and it disappeared so there was a little crack between the trees I think it saw it definitely not consistent uh, views there um, so now I'm going to go ahead and creep forward a little bit. Um, and I'm in the crosswalk, which is fine. I'm getting out towards the other edge of the road. And I've got a pretty good angle here from probably the B pillar looking a, a long ways down the road. And it's because of the direction of the curve and the sidewalk provides that buffer. Um, but my headlight cam is way out there um, and, and saw it first. It had, had a better angle there. Um, and just for distance, I'm going to measure to that... Um, that sign there. Okay, that second um, construction sign, the diamond sign, is at 98 meters, um, according to the rangefinder. So that's plus or minus a meter or so. So here's a good, good set of traffic approaching. Um, that sign, if, if is that about accurate? Yeah, I think it's pretty close. Is it, is it about 98 meters? The one with the diamond. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn left here and we'll see if we can find another intersection. Okay, here's another intersection that is more about plants and foliage. It's a stop sign uh, in a very slow rural street. So this is a scenario where you could creep out and probably almost get in the middle of the road and the oncoming cars shouldn't be able to see you very much. But put yourself in the robo taxi kind of a scenario. So I'm past the stop line and, and getting into the street here. I'm probably not going to get any traffic to show you. This is kind of in the, in the neighborhood. But I... You know, a car could be going about 30, 35 miles an hour, and I can't see yet. So here I am creeping, creeping, creeping. Okay, right about there is where I can see through that last bush uh, if a car was coming. To really see down the road, I'm right about there with, with my head in the driver's seat. So I'm in the road for sure, um, and if a car was coming, would have to go around me. So that's kind of the plant sort of a scenario where you know a slow creep has to be pretty careful or get a little bit of logic to be able to see through the fringes um, for identification and speed detection okay I've shown you guys this intersection before a little bit and I think through the the forward camera you can see this uh, tree up here on the left it's kind of at the stop sign intersection and it's kind of sparsely leaved in other words I, I can see through it pretty well to look for motion but as I approach the uh, the stop line, I'm pretty much obscured. I can't see anything uh, yet, and I'm at the stop line. So here's where the creep starts to work, and I'm looking through the tree, and I can actually see a pedestrian on the other side 
um, of the tree and of course that pedestrian is not being rendered yet so it can't see the pedestrian maybe the pedestrian will be a good example of when it can actually see down the road so I'm getting close here to sticking out in the road um, I still can't see I can't see it all down the road I'm looking okay now I can see the pedestrian right there I'm halfway into the road right now um, so that is a good example of how foliage really can kind of get in the way. And now you can see the pedestrian is rendered. Um, it's, this is a slow location. You know, this is where you could probably safely creep out into the road and, and nobody's going to get hurt. Um, but the point is the car has to either hope at the speed it will see something when it comes or it has to um, improve its view. So this next intersection, you see, I got some trucks here to deal with. This is my five-way stop intersection here where it needs to stop, but it definitely cannot see down, uh, down this lane here. And you see these trucks have actually confused um, vision on where the road is even. So I'm looking out to the side and I've got to clear this traffic that has a speed limit of about 40. Right now, um, FSD is go accelerating through this intersection after the stop sign without looking down the lane but the proper action should be to creep and right now I could probably see about 80 and now I can start to see down the lane so there I am so that's the good behavior and how the B pillar eventually in this intersection can see it's just it's just a little bit later so the creeping action has to be kind of custom tailored until the vision system can acknowledge that it can see down the road All right, here's an intersection coming out of a park. Um, it's got some, some gates and everything uh, kind of here. And I can kind of see, you know, this isn't a great uh, example of, of blocking, but the point I'm showing here is looking through things like poles and lights um, and, and sometimes trees without any foliage. So the, the perspective from the B pillar is, is pretty good here to see safely for the speed of the traffic. Uh, we got some oncoming traffic here. I'm just going to hold the finger here to, to use some detection and, and see when it actually shows up. There they are. And there's a pedestrian kind of coming from behind there. All right. Okay, on this intersection here, the interesting thing is the angle is kind of funny. So uh, you can kind of see how this road curves around and the look back is to the left. Um, so as I approach the stop line, I'm at the stop line right there. Uh, and I've got a good distance to creep here, but I can't see anything yet. So I'm stopping and here's where I'm going to start creeping. Um, I'm starting to get a view right about there. I can probably see the distance. Uh, safely. I'm right at the edge of the road. It's fine. Um, let's see. I think we do have a car coming, so we can try to do a little bit of perception here. Right there. Okay, right about at that 35 mile an hour sign. Um, I'm going to do a range detection on that. Okay, the 35 mile an hour sign is at 60 meters. There's not much traffic here at the moment. Okay, I filmed this intersection before on previous versions, version eight and, and uh, the like. Uh, this one is, is kind of an interesting one because there's a really close tree right here. So there I am at the stop line um, and obviously I've got to creep forward um, and this is a, the three lane intersection here so the cars kind of jump out pretty quick uh, white Model X here coming from the left okay so right about there is where I'm starting to see cars if they were going really really fast obviously the left edge is the most dangerous because it's the most obscured um, 
and just for range I'm going to try and uh, look down the street here Okay, that triangle sign with the wreath on it is at 115 meters. Okay, there we go. Okay, the camera cut off. Uh, I think my battery is running low, so I think that's all we're going to get for today. Um, but I think my point here is it's just trying to show the perspective from a uh, a possible forward camera uh, in the headlight area or the B-pillar camera. In mo most situations, the B-pillar in a very uh, well-refined creeping action is going to be able to see traffic. Uh, it is not as good as a human in my mind because I can move my head about two and a half feet forward of the B-pillar so I can change the geometry and look further down uh, a road when there's traffic coming. Um, in all scenarios, it, does, it may not matter. In, in some scenarios, it does. So I think, you know, just to add a little bit more to the conversation, um, the software is just gonna have to continue to get better to handle the situations where it cannot see. And the most important point is it needs to know when it cannot see and come up with either an alternate route, a safer turn, or uh, a reroute kind of a scenario. Uh, and that's kind of where I sit on it right now. You know, to be superhuman, I think it ought to have a better perspective than a human. Um, that does not mean Tesla doesn't think they can get there from where they are. I think uh, only time will tell. Anyway, let me know what you think of the comments. Uh, if you appreciate this kind of work, let me know. Have a great day.